Remember the f you fan from Iceberg Thermal we reviewed a few months ago? Well, apparently they also made a cooler that goes around it. This is the Iceberg Thermal Ice Lead X7 Dual, the most recognizable cooler which you will find right now. This thing got everything. We got a dual tower heatsink, seven 6mm heat pipes, a 120mm fan in the front, a 140mm fan in the middle, and the thing I enjoy the most in the world, a crap load of plastic. Buckle up, because if you want your build to stand out in a positive or negative way, that will be up to you to decide, but if you need it to stand out, this is a way to go. But before that, this episode is brought to you by scdkey.com. scdkey is a platform to get genuine CD keys for all sorts of games and Steam, Origin or Uplay game keys. But the most exciting aspect for us are the software keys. Do you know that pesky Windows 10 activation message that not even the engineers over at NASA managed to get rid of? Well, scdkey.com can help you with that. Look for Windows 10 Pro OEM that currently goes for just below $22. But before you buy it, make sure to use the promo code STS to get an additional 25% off and enjoy a completely message-free Windows experience. Oh, and you thought this would be exclusively for Windows 10? No. Thanks to Microsoft doing the right thing for once, you can use these Windows 10 OEM codes to activate either a Windows 10 or Windows 11 machine for its complete lifetime. If you want to learn more about scdkey.com, head over to their website or have a look at the other offers in the description below. And don't forget to use the promo code STS because using it saves you exactly one Arctic P12. An Ice Lead X7 Dual comes inside the undeniably most beautiful packaging on the market. Simple carton and completely filled with thin sheets of wrapping paper plastered with the company logo and cut-ins and it is, it is just truly beautiful. And no, once you take it apart you will never be able to put it back together exactly as it came out before. Trust me, I tried everything. It won't close the way it closed before. Inside we'll find the usual suspects, the cooler itself, some thermal paste, mounting hardware for AMD and Intel, and some additional stuff we'll need during the installation. On that note, my particular unit did not yet come with an Intel LGA1700 support out of the box, but they sent that stuff along with the cooler, so for whoever gets one of these nowadays, that should all be included in the box, or you get the additional box added to it and you will get an LGA 1700 mount. And now let's take a closer look at this beautiful piece of polypropylene. In the front we got a 120mm fan but unlike the f*** you monster that Iceberg Thermals offers as a solution to cool down Formula 1 engines, this one here is spinning at up to 1815rpm while it's pushing 76 CFM at 2.8mm of H2O. The 140mm fan completely entrapped inside this well-designed and absolutely easy to remove sheets of sophisticated Coca-Cola bottles is spinning at up to 1600 rpm with 96 CFM and 2.65 mm of H2O. If you were to remove all of this plastic we got three things. The most horrific experience ever, enough of that stuff to piss off every politician in Europe, and somebody will glue himself to your driveway. But what we will also find is this relatively dense fin stack. And although this dual tower heatsink is noticeably smaller compared to giants like the NHD15 or Dockrock Pro 4, it's 94 fins are stacked close enough to maybe make a difference. But these fins are not stacked, as in what most other companies do. These here are all soldered, so additional bonds potentially enhancing the heat transfer from heat pipe to heat fin, which may actually make a difference. But what's really cool is the base. There we will find a 2023 worth sized copper nickel plated base with seven heat pipes. That, that's one heat pipe more than pretty much everybody else. After strapping all of these lip fillers back onto the heatsink, we can measure that the overall height of the cooler is about 166 millimeters. For the RAM clearance, oof, due to the heatsink not being offset as much as they could have been, we got ourselves a RAM clearance of 
only 45 millimeters something that you need to keep in mind in case you wanted to go for like huge over the top ram with rgb on top and the heatsink on top and and that's not the cooler for that but before we proceed with this turtle nightmare let's take a look at the cooler's performance Using this poor little thing, we created three scenarios, a low workload at 120 watts, a mid to high workload at 250 watts, and a god tier with good luck cooling down 320 watts. To get our numbers, we switched between the different modes in BIOS with pretty much every imaginable setting locked down. Then we hit the CPU and wait for about 10-15 minutes until the cooler reached what it can do on a permanent time span. From there we gradually lower the fan speed in 10% steps and we note down the CPU package temperature on an average of 2 minutes and we deduct the air temperature measured in front of the fan in order to get the temperature above ambient. For the noise we position the cooler on a table and a dB meter exactly 1 meter away on its own tripod and then we do the same thing. 100% fan speed, we measure the dB, we decrease it by 10, measure again over and over again until we have the noise at any given fan speed. Let's begin with the low workload. At 120 watts total package power, the 7 heat pipes of the Iceleads X7 did pretty much nothing or everything, it depends on how you look at it, but at 31.7 degrees C above ambient, the biggest cooler iceberg thermal offers right now beats pretty much every air cooler we have tested so far, including the industry standard NHD15 or other contestants like the Dark Rock Pro 4. And funnily enough, even some AIOs got their ass whooped, like the Liquid Freezer 240 or even 360. On the noise to performance side, yeah this thing is loud. While the X7 Dual did manage to get the temps to the absolute lowest we have seen from an air cooler, normalized to, for example, its competitor the NHD15 does not paint a pretty picture. And the same goes for the Dark Rock Pro 4. Compared to other candidates, like for example the Gamdias P1 or Arctic Freezer 50, it's a mixed thing. At high speeds, the X7 Dual does have the upper hand, but once you go below a certain point, the X7 Dual keeps being so loud that it never even reaches noise floor. But that was only for 120 watts, and at that point there just isn't enough heat to transport away in the first place, so let's just bump it up to 250. At 250 watts, things start to make a lot more sense, with the X7 Dual now keeping the 3900K at 64.2 degrees C above ambient. It is still the number one air cooler so far, but it is now awfully close to the NHD15. But still, number one is number one. On the noise to performance graph for 250 watts, it got even worse than before. Even if a comparison to a Freezer 50 and Gambia's P1 would remain the same, the distance to a Noctia NHD15 just seems to be getting bigger and bigger. So as far as max performance is concerned, hands down, best air cooler I have seen until now, no doubt there. That, that thing will even beat an NHD15. For noise, not even close. It's not horrible, it is still better than a Freezer 50 if you need the kickdown, but very far from a Nokia big boy. But now let's get to the most devastating part of this cooler, the installation process. In theory it is easy as hell, it truly is, and Icepack Thermal even made sure to include little gimmicks like company themed screws and backplates, which I believe is a great idea or it, it does add some flair to the whole thing and let's just quickly go over it. To install it on an AM5 4 and everything until you reach your grandpa's PC you need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets, screw in the AMD spacers, slap the AMD brackets on top and screw the whole thing down with the thumb screws. Over an Intel we need to adjust the end pieces of the backplate according to your socket and position it behind the board. Or if you are on LGA 1700, take the additional backplate, shove the screws through it and then screw them down with the tiny screwable washers or something of that kind on the other side and then stick it behind the motherboard. On the other side, spacers, Intel brackets, then the thumb screws. And now comes the part that still haunts me until this very day. The removal of the geometrically shaped ass fillers. Oh, ah, mm. 
Ah, uh, yeah, now, now it's broken. Now it's broken for sure, no. And once you go through the pain in the ass process, put the cooler retention bracket into position and screw it down using the themed thumb screw, which undoubtedly is kind of cool, and screw the whole thing down onto your chip, yeah, well, don't forget that nightmares will haunt you twice, and... Uh, uh, ooh. Forget about it, because you certainly made a crucial mistake. You see, the whole thing comes with ARGB. The front fan got some rainbow-infused unicorn power, and the logo on the top of the cooler also got some of that fairy dust. And believe me or not, but each fan comes with its own PVM cable, but there is just a single controllable 3-pin ARGB connector. So how does ARGB magically go from the front fan to the top port, which is attached to the fan, which we just completely removed? Well, it's daisy-chained by using this freakishly minimalistic bullshit of a fucking cable. And this is the final boss of Thermal Icebergs uh, cooler. Try to get that piece of shit back into its header whilst using one of your hands to keep the fan in place because otherwise you might scratch something or even the fan. And not to forget that putting the whole thing back together now with the cable dangling in between just creates a whole other level of ridiculous difficulty. Because of that, I hated the whole process, the whole installation process. In theory, it is, it is fine. I don't get why the retention bracket is not universal and pre-installed, but that's okay. I can live with that. I could somehow forgive that the removable process of, of plastic reminds me of the inner side of a uh, internal car door panel. I can forgive that. But this is diabolic. This is too much. Why not attach the central RGB to the fan and let it come out in the bottom with a regular 3-pin ARGB like everybody else does? It's, I get it. It would mean an additional fan and you couldn't use like daisy chaining as a feature. But this, this is way worse. This is just trouble for my therapist. So where do we stand? Well, yeah and no. If we take a closer look at the craptastic product description scale, Iceberg Thermal gets a solid zero RG poops. Nothing on here is a lie. It's peak performance, our benchmarks prove that, or for us, that's the case. Chipset flexibility, yeah okay, as in used in combination with a socket bound to a specific chipset, or as in doesn't run into a chipset located kind of far away from the cooler in the first place. In both cases, it's fine, whatever the hell they meant by that. Sensational. Iceberg shall give you gaming PC a standout element. Yeah, definitely true. It is standing out. So all in all, the cooler performs great. The best air cooler so far, but not for the noise. We didn't test the exact number for my theory, but I do know that the plastic sides add a lot of that noise. Just by removing the side pieces, you can all immediately hear a difference. It's, it's like a whistle that you don't know that it is there, and as soon as you remove the two sides, it's gone. And yeah, you know where the whistle is coming from, and you hear that the, the DB goes down, it's, oh, the plastic adds a lot of the noise. It's essentially the same thing we saw on the Frieza 50. Not to say that the fans are blameless, but the artistically designed shell is probably a contributing factor to that bad noise to performance ratio compared to an NHD 15. However, what bugs me the most is that 45mm RAM restriction. Sure, 45mm is a lot, it's more than 10mm more than the NHD 15 by default, and for most RAM sticks out there, this is going to be fine. However, Again, plastic. For coolers that use regular fan clips, like for example the NHD15, you can always just take it off and mount the fan a bit higher, which sure you might lose a bit of performance, but you can always use it. On here, however, it's a 160mm cooler, high cooler, no matter what. 
and 45 mm higher RAM, no matter what. And that can become an issue. Now, on the design side of things, it's special. No matter if you like it or not, it definitely looks different. I do like that Iceberg is sticking to that. Not everybody will like that turquoise bluish geometrical Iceberg design. I'm sure there are tons of people who think this is ugly as hell. But if you like it, that's great for you. But in the very least, we should all be able to agree that they are doing something different. And that's one way to go. Price-wise, the cooler is actually placed a lot better than I expected. I can get one right now for as little as 68 euros, which is close to half as much as a Nokia NHD15, so it is really not that bad. And it can even be used for quite hard things like a 3900K, 7950X, those kinds of things. But something that needs to be kept in mind is that noise to performance ratio. It is far from perfect. Performance is amazing, but it is loud. Arctic level 50 level of loud. So kind of your decision. Peak air performance, X7 Dual. Best noise to performance ratio for an air cooler, still an HD15. Very unique bluish design to make everybody envy your artistic color matching skills, X7 Dual. Anyway, I think this should be it for the Iceberg Thermal Ice Sleet X7 Duel. It's a sleet, not sheet, right? Yeah, Ice Sleet X7 Duel. At this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you are looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG Poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also make sure that no Ice Lead 7 duels will end up in the ocean. Imagine how many people will glue themselves to the highway if even a single turtle shows up somewhere with its head stuck somewhere inside of this Ice Lead. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Lee and Lee Gala 2 Trinity performance, the best performing water cooler or any cooler we have seen so far. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.